This fracture, <coughs> this uh, question uh, looks at subtrochanteric fractures, and it's question number 39 from that module. It's a 70-year-old female presents with a right uh, thigh ache for six months. Except for a history of osteoporosis, she's otherwise healthy, and she's been on antiresorptive uh, bisphosphonate therapy for eight years. Her radiograph uh, in the one on your left <coughs> was four months, uh, was uh, her initial radiograph. And then after she slipped and fell, uh, we see the uh, subsequent uh, two uh, x-rays. The fracture pattern is transverse and has a couple of components that uh, help us understand uh, the etiology of this particular fracture. And the question asks, um, uh, is this uh, asked specifically, um, what, uh, uh, which of the uh, following statements is true regarding surgical fixation of this fracture compared to conventional fractures? What that question is asking uh, you to recognize is that uh, this patient has osteopenia, that they've been on an anti-resorptive uh, treatment for quite uh, some time, and their bone is a bit more, um, more brittle or more fragile. And there's an increased risk of iatrogenic fracture with intramedullary nail fixation uh, in these um, bisphosphonate fractures compared to uh, ones that occur by other mechanisms. In trying to recognize these fractures, uh, you're going to see a couple of characteristics, uh, characteristic findings. One is focal lateral cortical thickening. There's a typically a straight transverse or nearly straight transverse fracture orientation, a medial spike or medial beak, <clears throat> and lack of any uh, significant comminution at the fracture. So for subtrochanteric fractures, uh, they are typically defined as uh, a, from five centimeters below the lesser trochanter, uh, uh, any, anywhere uh, distal to uh, the lesser trochanter by five uh, centimeters. Um, anyone, uh, fractures that have more proximal extension uh, are more commonly called uh, peritrochanteric uh, fractures or intertrochanteric fractures with subtrochanteric extension. And these uh, particularly uh, patients with a low energy mechanism, when you see a subtrochanteric fracture, you want to look at other potential pathologic uh, mechanisms for that fracture, including uh, tumor or uh, bisphosphonate use. A number of times the, the questions are asked uh, about the displacement of these particular fractures at the time uh, following injury, and in this question, uh, reflects the muscle forces acting upon the proximal and distal fragments. So on the proximal fragment, uh, there is um, abduction, which is a, uh, is a uh, constellation of the gluteus medius and uh, minimus force, flexion from the iliopsoas, and the short external rotators affecting uh, external rotation of that fragment. The adduct, uh, adductor uh, will uh, affect a force of adduction and shortening on the distal fragment. So flexion, adduction, external rotation of the uh, proximal fragment and shortening of the limb uh, are the uh, findings that are going to be classically questioned. If you look at uh, classification systems for uh, subtrochanteric fracture, uh, fractures, Russell showed <coughs> Uh, broke these down into basically two. The first uh, is the, with no uh, proximal um, uh, extension of the fracture line, and those uh, in type two in which there was uh, proximal extension, that can best be visualized on the lateral uh, radiograph. And in that circumstance, uh, it uh, can have implications with regard to the type of fixation. Those with uh, extension of the fracture line into the uh, piriformis fossa uh, may displace uh, the fracture fragments with a, a trochanteric or, or uh, piriformis uh, nail place, and a <clears throat> locking lateral uh, plate uh, may be more, um, uh, more appropriate for those particular patients. Again, um, if we're looking with regard to radiographs, uh, you need an AP and lateral of that uh, hip. It's always helpful to uh, see an AP pelvis, and because these fractures can be associated with other injuries, a full-length uh, uh, femur films 
uh, including the knee, need to be and uh, need to be part of the, the the imaging repertoire. With regard to treatment for subtrochanteric fractures, um, it's relatively rare uh, to treat these non-operatively. That has to be a um, patient that is has uh, multiple medical comorbidities and essentially a non-ambulator. There's strong muscles that pull on that uh, fragment, and consequently, displacement and continued pain are are uh, are common. So, operative management uh, usually is done with a cephalomedullary nail. <clears throat> Uh, and a and or a fixed angle uh, plate. Uh, fixed angle plate can be associated uh, can be used in association with femoral neck fractures, uh, as we'll uh, see later. Uh, fixation of the femoral neck fracture, or stabilization of the femoral neck fracture before management of the uh, diaphyseal component, is uh, is is uh, the better uh, way to proceed. <clears throat> so. With regard to complications, uh, the most common uh, malunion seen with subtrochanteric fracture reflects uh, the forces acting upon the proximal uh, and distal fragments, as we previously mentioned. And they can uh, result in varus uh, procurvatum uh, or, and or flexion, uh, malreduction of the uh, fracture itself. And fixation in that uh, will lead uh, to a radiograph um, with more varus in the proximal femur uh, shortening uh, and uh, um, can be uh, problematic for, uh, for, uh, for union as well because of the decreased apposition of bone. Um, so <clears throat> additionally, uh, in the bisphosphonate fractures, uh, nail fixation, again, I mentioned a uh, higher instance of iatrogenic fracture. Uh, but also an increased risk of non-union as these are uh, relatively atrophic. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.